So, dudes, welcome back to the Gregor Gaming Experience. Goyo, DZ, and SSG Oregon. A little bit of a Looney Tunes episode. This match was a lot of back and forth, unexpected twists and turns, a real roller coaster ride. SSG would slip on a banana peel in the form of an explosive banana peel by Canadian from below onto Bosco. Goodbye, kaboom. And then Hotton and Skies take 1v1 gunfights with a shotgun in close quarters. DZ goes to Charlotte. Will they get to the finals? I don't know. That's a topic for another video, but we're going to talk about Goyo placements. We're going to talk about where you should put Goyos, why you're placing the Goyos in the places that you are placing them. So pay attention to Canadian. Here's a default for Master Bedroom. Goyo canister on this side of the door and another Goyo canister on the other side of the door. This wall here is open. A more aggressive play to try and contest control of this closet next to the master bedroom. You got a deployable shield by NJR here. By the way, defenders are blue. So all the markers are going to be blue for defenders, including their utility. Goyo can here. Goyo can here. Shield. Okay. So this is a pretty straightforward setup to look at. You can see you got the shield here. Uh, somebody's going to be playing behind it to contest Master Bedroom. Uh, attackers want to get Master Bedroom control so that they can more easily open up the wall. But in this configuration, the wall is actually open. So you're going to see more aggressive play uh, closet side. And there's actually a mute jammer here, so let's mark that as well. I'm going to prevent drones uh, from reaching the player playing in games. As an attacker, if you can't get intel on this games guy, you're going to be a lot more worried when you take this gunfight to move in and eventually try to go for, uh, go for a plant in games. Okay? This is going to make the gunfighting more difficult because you're not going to have intel on him. You're not going to be as prepared uh, for that engagement as you normally would be. The wall is open, obviously, at the beginning of the round, but the trade-off here is that you're hoping to get more picks initially, and then it's going to be a little bit more difficult for the attacker's to take this piece of map control because there's Goyo cans on it. The basic idea is you're okay with giving up master wall control as long as you waste about um, you know 40 seconds off of the clock in terms of them actually being able to make the push. Because as soon as these cans go off, it doesn't matter if the wall is open or not. They're not going to be able to do what they want to do, taking the safest route. Notice how there's a lot of concealment on this route. If they go for the def default plant in the most efficient way possible, there's walls here that, 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 that can cover them, right? This is why this piece of map control is so freaking important because it provides a ton of concealment and you can deal with the, uh, with the white stairs guy and a bunk guy with a big window player or even a guy on this window as well. But there is a layer to this defense underneath on the first floor being held by Mute. Now, why the frick, why the heck is Mute playing below when the site is up top? This room, security, doesn't really get a lot of play uh, for this particular site in Ranked. So you're probably wondering why the heck he's allocating Mute Jammers over here to these walls to keep him from getting pushed from meeting side. He does have a hatch drop as well. So they've committed a pretty sizable portion of their resources to this particular part of the map. And the reason for that is because it's going to give a little bit of pressure to a white push by the attackers. When they go up the staircase, they're going to try to go through bunk and then go for a bunk plant instead of a typical games plant. So already we've kind of seen a kink in the bluff here. SSG sees this setup and then we see that they don't really have a ton of hard breach. They got the can openers on Nook, but Haban is the only dedicated hard breacher. You don't really need a lot of hard breach in this instance. You're not going to be opening up, you're not going to be opening as much stuff. So we're seeing more of an allocation of resources on SSG's side to a more aggressive, gunfight-based sort of push into bunk. But DZ's already taken a frag grenade off of the board from the attackers because Fultz uses one of his frag grenades to blow up the Goyo can at the top of white. 20 seconds, we'll click down to 130 by the time that fire stops. So that's plenty of time to go for and execute. And there's not really a lot of gunfighting that takes place until about, a, about 20 seconds after this frame that we're looking at here. 
because Eclipse is going to get shot from below by faults eventually underneath Freezer. Now, this is a very tense kind of standoff here because it's match point. People don't want to make a mistake here. They don't want to make a mistake and go for an aggressive play when they don't really need to. Eclipse isn't going to swing out here and try to take these gunfights. He's going to try and stay here for as long as he can. I don't know if he didn't hear the uh, the staircase drop by faults here, probably because he was flashed. That's another thing about flashbangs is that they can also conceal sound. That's useful information to conceal, by the way. That is a good thing to do. Eventually, the security guy is no more. So you might think SSG is in a pretty good position to win this round right now. They have man count. They have time. Seems like everything's going pretty well. Another component of this is that Skies is going to solo push through tower here. He's got drones set up, and he's going to solo push with a can opener from the big tower through attic this way. So that's one thing that a can opener does, is that it not only allows them to help with the main wall, but it also allows them to take advantages of gaps in the resources the defenders haven't allocated towards, like the attic wall where they don't have a dedicated wall denial, as they can see during the drone phase. So SSG isn't falling for it. Now you could very well have a Twitch drone come in here to try and take out the cans, okay? But as long as they see the cans, as long as they see that Master is chalked, especially with a shield set up, if it's still there at this frame, I can't really tell quite yet, but they're just not gonna fall for it. They're not going to do the Master push. So keep this in mind. In some situations, Goyo can act like a bluff. He can keep people away from a certain part of the map just because the attackers could be too scared to go for it. And that ability to manipulate attacker movements, yeah, you don't see these cans get blown up. Yeah, they don't end up getting fire damage on people. There's not a lot of involvement, not a lot of active play with these particular cans in this round. However, it does influence the attackers to move in a way that you can take advantage of. You can use process of elimination to go, okay, they're not going master. Looks like they're gonna go white. As we can see here, they're gonna go for a white A-bomb plant. Let's move our people around to counteract this potential play. Toulon didn't listen. There's more to Goyo than just getting fire damage on people. He can also act as a deterrent, an area deterrent. And that's something that's somewhat understated, but still very powerful. Remember we were talking about Skies doing that solo push into Attic. Nuk has significantly benefited from attacker rework. Play more Nuk. She's really good. Huge pick here from the Attic push onto Hyper. You're in a 3v5, and it looks like the defenders don't really have anything set up. I mean, Pampa's looking at top white. What should we be concerned about? We need to be concerned about Attic, top white, and big window. How are we going to deal with big window? We don't have a dedicated player for big window. He's not on this floor. Or is he? Or is he? Here's Canadian. And they have vertical holes set up for big window. So there's a call here. Flashes go down. Smoke grenade goes down. They're pushing big window. Pushing big window. Going big window. Communication error. Fultz gets a little too antsy. He gets a little too aggressive. And I'm pretty sure this flash flashes both Bosco and Fultz as they go for the execute. He pushed big window, he pushed big window. It smoked off, goodbye. Canadian, vertical holes right here, goodbye faults. A little bit more man count. Pamba, huge pick, really needs this. Top white, instantly gets the man count down to 3v3. But look out for Skies. The Goyle can gets lit. Skies has to make a decision. Do I go for the rotate on the bunk player or do I go through here to try and take out Pamba? He gets licked by the fire a little bit. He's going to be easier to take down in a gunfight. But this is really, really smart play by the defenders here because it's using vertical pressure to do two things at once. Establish pressure from different parts of the map that aren't just on the same floor, right? We don't have a dedicated bunk player. That's not as safe. That's an easier gunfight to take. When the attacker goes through this vault prompt, they can't, it's very difficult for them to take this gunfight with the guy below as they do this. It's easier for them to take a gunfight with somebody standing up on the bunks. But instead, we have a guy down below shooting up above, and that's all he needs to do. That's all he needs to do. 
is take that gunfight and win it. Because it's an easy gunfight to take. Also, let's talk about the fact that Canadian is even here in the first place. The only reason that Canadian is here is because he wasn't cleared. He wasn't droned out. So he was able to get influence from the floor below while the attackers aren't in a position to deal with this guy. They have to worry about the execute above. They already wasted so much time. It's 13 seconds left. We have to make a play to try and win this game. It's a desperation move at this rate. We keep going here. Skies ultimately decides to take the gunfight with Pamba. Wins that gunfight. Here comes Hotton. It's going to be up to this. It's going to be up to these two guys here. Nope, wrong thing. It's going to be up to Skies. It's going to be up to Hotton to protect Bosco while he tries to get the plant down. But Skies and Hotton can't do anything about the vertical play that Canadian can make here because Canadian has a C4. Nobody can go down below and try to catch Canadian before this happens. They can try to establish a cross for Bosco. All right, don't get me wrong. Skies, he can try to keep a fight from happening. Hotton, if he gets up, uh, if he gets up here, he can try to cut off NJR just a little bit while he's in kids to protect Bosco. But they can't do shit about the C4. They're just not in position to do anything about it. It's too far away, not enough time. It's a desperation play at this point. Canadian gets a huge C4 kill here. Goyo has a ton of map influence, not just through his cans on particular parts of the map that he sets up, but also with his vertical pressure through a C4. Skies and Hotton, tragic situation here. I'm not 100% sure if they realize that the timing of this swing was bad, but they give NJR two 1v1 gunfights on a really, really close angle with a shotgun. Good freaking luck. It's just not going to happen. NGR wins this every single time. Dark Zero go to Charlotte. So put respect on Canadian's name. The best Goyo player in North America, I think. According to, according to this tweet by Super Seth. Something to think about. Goyo, capable of doing lots of things that you may not expect. Not just blowing up a can and then, oh, I can't push this for a while. There's multiple layers to it. It's a multi-layered, multi-faceted game, and that's what makes it so fun to watch. Subscribe for more breakdowns like this. Let me know what games you would like to see me cover in the future. And as always, thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, do the stuff. Thanks again. Deuces.